So we've looked at confidence intervals for proportions, uh, for and for means, um, and part of what um, one of the key considerations in looking at confidence intervals um, was that we worked with this basic idea that said that for our confidence interval, 95% of the time when we take a sample, it's expected to be within two standard deviations of the mean. And since we're taking a sample, right, our random event is not just one person. Our random event is the random value that gets generated from taking a sample of some size, sample IQ, sample GPA, sample heights. And so one of the basic premises um, of this is that we use the central limit theorem, which says that for our samples, we know the distribution from which our sample comes. And that was kind of the big benefit of the central limit theorem. Um, and it says that each time we take a sample, it com comes from essentially a histogram that has a certain standard deviation. And if we know the population, the standard deviation, we know the standard deviation of the sample the distribution. And that that sample tends to um, move toward, each time we take a sample, it's a good predictor of, um, or estimate of the population value. So, without doing a proof sketch just yet, we're going to use a very similar idea um, where instead of a sample mean, we're going to be interested in a sample proportion. Um, and that sample proportion it's going to follow the same patterns we've seen, um, except that it's, um, and it follows also this basic idea that we've seen earlier, that for Bernoulli experiments or binomial distributions, they can be approximated by a normal distribution. And there are some considerations here. So we're assuming that um, when we take our samples, our sample proportions, it honors the binomial um, scenario where it's either a yes or a no and that, that we have a sufficient number of um, elements within our sample. So in some very real sense this looks quite a bit the standard deviation of these uh, proportions. Um, it looks very much like what we've seen before but instead of x bar, we're talking about p hat. So what does that mean, um, p hat? It means that I can go to any body of, say, students. Let's say we have 38 students, and I determine that of those, um, let's use 100 students. Of those 100 students, maybe we can figure out the number of students that wish to vote for candidate, let's say 63 out of the 100, say they're going to vote for a particular candidate. That means that our sample proportion is 63 out of 100. 0.63. So our sample proportion is 0.63. Um, and then, uh, for the sake of convenience, instead of always writing 1 minus p hat, what we're going to do is use q hat instead, since it's just simply the complement of p, um, p hat. So that what is that? 0 0.37. So the math behind us, behind this, says that we know something about the 
standard error or the standard deviation of these proportions. Right, once you know what percentage are going to vote one way or another, then since we've already counted the number of individuals, and since we know that the percentage that are going to vote would be 6.3, and then the complement of that is the 0.37, we had 100 total in the group, and we'd run these calculations. And we'd come up with the standard deviation. Um, for the distribution. And the distribution um, is that distribution where if we were to repeatedly take samples of 100 um, individuals and record their votes, what type of histogram would that generate? So that's the distribution. And so we know something about the spread of that, um, of that distribution. So that's what, before we kind of go more into the math behind it, let's just see if we can um, move into to applying it. So let's define what the confidence interval is. The confidence interval for a proportion population value is just go ahead and get the sample of students or um, citizens that are going to vote a particular way and then we can make a statement about the larger population by applying this um, margin of error so this will be easy to determine, right? We'll know what percentage of students wish to vote one way or another, or, or citizens. We'll also know how many students um, or citizens we've gathered. And we'll just take the square root um, of that quotient. So when you're taking the square root of one um, over the other, you can just take the square root of both and remove the individual radical signs. So this is the confidence interval for a proportion P. And let's see what we can do with applying that. Um, so let's look at a simple example. Um, Okay, so um, here's an example. Let's say that we have, um, there's a researcher. And this researcher has determined that um, there are a number of MRI machines That are, that are malfunctioning due to um, inconsistent magnetic fields. It's a magnetic resonance image machine. So an MRI machine, um, these are, there are these MRI machines that malfunction. Due to a faulty electronics, we'll say. Um, so a random sample a simple random sample or some group of these of uh, 40 machines is taken And 12 of the samples are 
faulty. Twelve of the samples are malfunctioning. Um, so we have the percentage that's malfunctioning right there, 12 out of 40. We want to be able to make a statement about the population as a whole. So it's going to be 12 out of 40 plus or minus some margin of error. So p hat is actually pretty easy. Um, what we want to do is compute the 95% confidence interval. So compute the 95% confidence interval for the population value. Compute the 95% confidence interval. Um, for the population proportion, P, that's, um, that's malfunctioning out there in the real world. Um, so we have a sample, but what's actually, what do we expect to see for the overall population? So um, for our sample, um, that's 12 out of the 40. 4 goes in there, 3 tenths, so 3 tenths or 30 percent, and therefore Um, the estimated value of the standard error for proportions is going to be 0.3. That's the P times Q, which is 1 minus P. Those two together add up to, to 1, of course, since they're always complements. And then you want to take the square root of those two. So 0.3 times 0.7 um, divided by 40, and then take the square root of that. So 0.3 times 0.7 divided by 40, and let's take the square root. Of that answer that we just calculated. So we get 0 0.07246. 0 0.07246. Um, and so the function, or the formula that we're using, is this one right here to get the margin of error, right? Um, or to determine the interval, actually. And what we've seen is that interval, right? We determined some of the values here um, p hat, q hat, all over n, take the square root. Um, and so the working model for our confidence intervals. sometimes helpful to see. So that value here um, at 95% we know that alpha in this case is 5%. It's everything else and this is z at alpha over 2. Um, so this is 2.5 and over here is 2.5 and if we use inverse norm We'll get our value, and if you just remember 95 plus or minus 2, that helps you remember what this answer should be. It's going to be 1.96, actually, nearly 2. And then just multiply that by the 0 0.07246. Um, and what was p hat? It was 0.3. So let's go ahead and put our 0.3 here. What's 
that times 1.96 is 0 0.14. So 0 0.3 plus or minus 0 0.14. Um, so let me to keep this simpler. I'm going to do something I usually discourage. I'm going to round off just to keep the math simple. So 0 0.3 um, minus, plus or minus, so let's do the minus first. And then let's do the plus second. We usually want the smaller number over to the left in our interval notation. So what is that? That's like 30 cents minus 14 cents, so 0.16. And on the upper end, it's uh, 0 0.4. Four, four. So what that says is that the population value, pop the percentage of those machines out there in the population that are malfunctioning is somewhere between 16% um, and 44%. So that's the and the brief introduction to how we determine intervals for population proportions. It's mostly straightforward. The one other thing that I want to do is make sure you can also do this with the calculator. 95% um, random sample, 40 machines. Let's punch this into our calculator and see what that gives us. Um, so if you go to stats, tests, and we want to do intervals. Um, and we're going to go all the way down to single one, a single proportion, Z interval. And notice that it's X over N. It looks kind of like numerator over denominator. Um, so what was it? 12 out of 40. So it's 12 that failed out of the 40 and we want a 0.95 and we get the 0.16 up to 0.44 um, and our, if we go back um, we'll see that that is the same 0.16 to 0 0.44 um, so those values are consistent so you can also use your calculator um, to do this work for you as well.